In the last video, we started developing this idea that for a slowly varying potential, we expect the, the wave functions in the Schrodinger equation take on the following form. So they look very similar to plane waves, uh, but they have this extra factor over here that generally depends on x. So, and this will make uh, the waves slightly curved. And our job now is to uh, to figure out what this s of x is. And once we know that, then we would have a solution to the Schrodinger equation. So uh, what we'll do is just plug our assumed wave function into the time independent Schrodinger equation, which we've rewritten as follows. So we still have the momentum operator squared. And this is equal to this local momentum that we defined in the last video, uh, the square of the local momentum times the wave function. So plugging uh, this into our equation, Uh, we're dealing in uh, one dimensions. So the momentum operator just sticks on uh, this value here, minus h bar squared times the second derivative with respect to x. And on this side, we just uh, plug the same thing in. Uh, the normalization constant here, this a, cancels out on both sides. So that's why I haven't written it. Uh, if you carry out the differentiation, you end up with the following terms. So you get uh, a second derivative of this function as x. And from the chain rule, you get uh, the square of the first derivative of s with respect to x. So there's our left-hand side. And the right-hand side, we just end up with our local momentum square. The face over here, this e to the i sx, uh, will cancel on both sides. Uh, every time we take a derivative, we'll always have this term left over, which will cancel with the one on the right-hand side. So what we're left with then is the following differential equation. Okay, so this is our new task. If we wanna figure out what S of X is, we have to solve this differential equation. And uh, you might be thinking that we've, we've lost ground here because we've gone from uh, a linear differential equation in the Schrodinger equation to a complicated uh, nonlinear differential equation over here. Uh, the saving grace of this is that we'll be able to make some assumptions on some of these terms that uh, aren't obvious in the original Schrodinger equation. And the important, another important thing to keep in mind here is that this equation is completely equivalent to our original time independent Schrodinger equation. We haven't made any approximations. We've only assumed uh, this type of solution at the moment. So to get some intuition behind these terms, uh, we're going to again, uh, zoom into our potential. Where uh, we're looking, we've zoomed in so much that our potential essentially looks constant again. So V of X 
is equal to some constant V naught. In this case, we know that S of X takes on this form. It shows some constant local momentum times the position. We saw this in the, in the last video. And what this means then is the second derivative of S with respect to X will be zero. This is for a constant potential. Okay, so what this means is this term in our differential equation doesn't play any role whatsoever if the potential is constant. So what this means for us is uh, if our potential is slowly varying, so it's very close to being constant, but uh, it's not quite constant. We can expect uh, this term, the second derivative to be very small. So if our potential varies very slowly, so the extreme case, it doesn't vary at all. It's a constant. The second derivative is zero. If it only slowly varies, we expect the second derivative to be very small. More specifically, we expect this whole term in our differential equation, this one over here, which I've written over here, is very small. And since this is proportional to h bar, the reduced Planck constant, uh, this is equivalent, loosely speaking, to saying that semi-classically, uh, the Planck constant, it, people usually say the Planck constant tends to zero. What they're saying is, uh, the Planck constant is much smaller than any other uh, energy scale of interest in, in the system. So we're going to treat H bar as uh, a parameter of, of smallness. So we're going to uh, kind of forget for a moment that this is a constant and we're just going to use it as a way of measuring what we mean by very small. And what this will allow us to do is uh, to expand S of X in a power series. Of our parameter of smallness, so of uh, of h bar. Okay, so what this means is uh, S of x will be equal to some zeroth order term S not of x plus something, uh, another function S one of x that is of order h bar. Another one. Uh, h bar squared, uh, another term s2x that's of order h bar squared, and so on. And uh, we just added two over here. Okay, and to be able to use this, we need to uh, determine a cutoff, after which we can suppose that the terms become so small that we can completely ignore them. And our intuition over here that any term that's proportional to h bar is already very small will allow us to say anything of order h bar square of or higher, which we'll write as big O h bar square is essentially equal to zero. I'll just write zero like this to differentiate it from the O.
Okay, and again, this is uh, I'll try to cram it over here, but this is because uh, we set our term D uh, or the second derivative of S with respect to X is proportional to H bar and that's already very small. So anything higher than that, of anything of higher order in H bar than that is uh, so small that we can ignore it. So what this means then is we're going to approximate this function that we're, we've been trying to determine by just these two terms. Okay, so the plan now is to take this form of S of X, go back to our differential equation and plug it in and see if we can develop a new solution. And now we finally began to introduce some approximations In taking this, we've neglected any higher order terms. Uh, you don't really need to go to higher order terms for this. Uh, this is usually sufficient to get fairly good accuracy. So in the next video, we'll pick up from here, uh, this form of S of X, plug it into this differential equation and come up with an approximate solution to the Schrodinger equation in the case where uh, our potential is slowly varying.